Hi, my name is Alex. We're here at UVic in EOW 148. We have a lab as part of the Center for Aerospace Research behind me that we built Orcasat in. Uh, this video is just to give everyone an overview of what's actually in our lab, how to use the lab, um, and just some helpful information about the lab and working in the lab. Uh, before you go into the lab, there's a couple things we have to note. It, it is a, a clean room in there, so we're going to try and keep the room clean. I'll give a rundown of how to gown up and go inside. I'm now wearing a face mask, and I've got my PSD bracelet on. I'll just show you what this looks like. PSD bracelet, conductive strip on the inside, and there's a snap on the top to plug a ground cord in so you can ground yourself. That's all the ESD bracelet does, is it just connects you to ground. So any charge that you may build up uh, discharges through the strap to ground and not through any electronics to ground. I'm gonna show you how to gown up to go inside the room. We're gonna start by putting shoe covers on. So shoe covers, there's a long seam and a short seam. You wanna grab the short seam and just pull it open and it'll open the shoe cover up and you can put your foot in and put your toe in first and then slide it over your heel. Toe in first, slide it over your heel. And once your shoe covers are on, uh, do not step outside of the yellow tape on the floor. Uh, that just indicates what floor we're trying to keep clean, what floor we're trying to keep dirty. Uh, there's not really any difference between this floor and the rest of the floor. It's just there's probably going to be less dirt inside the yellow tape than there is going to be outside the yellow tape. So once we have the shoe covers on, we just don't want to walk around too much with them on. This is a sticky mat. It's basically just a giant piece of sticky tape that you stand on and the stickiness of the mat uh, collects any dirt or dust that are on your feet before going in. So it's the last thing that you step on before going in the, in the room. Uh, you can change the sticky mat out by grabbing the corner. There's a number with the word U-line on it. You can just grab this and it just peels up. And then you can just crumple this up and discard it. I need to make sure I step on the sticky mat and the sticky mat will sticky off any uh, dirt or debris that are on the shoe covers. And because the shoe covers don't have any tread, uh, there's no way for them to collect any, any uh, dirt or dust that the sticky mat can't take off. The door is locked, so you can't get in unless you have a key. If you're using the lab all the time, I suggest getting the key from Professor Suleiman. Otherwise, there is a lockbox that you can enter a code and there is a key stored inside the lockbox. So we're inside the clean room and you'll notice that there's more yellow tape on the floor. This yellow tape is to indicate where you can stand uh, while gowning up and only once you're gowned up with the hairnet and lab jacket on can you cross the yellow tape. So this is the, the dirtiest area of the clean room. Everything outside of the tape is the cleaner area of the clean room. So the gowning order is important, so please pay attention to this. We've put our shoe covers on. That was outside the clean room. Now we're gonna put a hairnet on. It's important to put a hairnet on before you put your lab jacket on because you don't want any hair falling on your lab jacket once you put your lab jacket on. And throw this on your head. These are kind of a one size uh, fits all sort of deal. Make sure it's fully covering all of your hair. There is a mirror mounted to the door that allows you to check and make sure that all of your hair is lifted and kind of folded up inside the hairnet try and do your best and make sure that all of that hair or at least the majority of it is contained in the hairnet and you don't have any hair resting on your shoulders. If you have a beard, you should also wear a beard mask regardless of if you're wearing a face mask or not. So I have my hair net on. I'm gonna grab my lab jacket. If you're working in here all the time, you should have your own lab jacket. Mine is labeled and it should be stored with at least one snap closed so that when it's hanging from the rack, none of the inside of the lab jacket, which could have hair on it from your shirt, is touching the outside of any other lab jacket. I'm gonna undo the one snap and put it on and you want your lab jacket to be loose fitting and a little bit large so it can fit over your clothing. There are a few lab jackets stored on the far right here that have the visitor 
tag on them. And I think there's a small and a large, so you can find a size that works best for you. Now I am almost fully gowned up. I have my hairnet on, my lab jacket on, my shoe covers on. I'm wearing my EST bracelet. The only thing I'm missing is nitro gloves, which I'm not gonna put on because I'm not gonna be touching any satellite hardware. If you're touching any actual satellite hardware, you absolutely need to be wearing gloves. We don't want any oils getting onto the satellite. And if they do, the oils are very difficult to clean. We absolutely do not touch satellite hardware without gloves on. This shelf is a good spot to store items um, as you're gowning up and moving into the lab. So say you need a piece of equipment in this room that is not currently stored in this room and you have to bring it in from outside, it will probably be dirty. So when we talk about things being dirty, we're concerned about dust primarily and it'll test piece of test equipment such as a power supply or maybe a computer monitor or a computer or something like that will most likely have dust on the outside of it. So we need to clean that dust off because you don't want to bring all that dust into the clean room. If you're just bringing in a small bag of like components or you're bringing in something like this big, you don't need to worry about cleaning it unless it's really dusty, like you can see the dust on it. So the rule of thumb I like to use is anything bigger than a clean room wipe, uh, you should wipe off. So there's two ways of cleaning things. I'm going to use this multimeter as an example. You can give it a wipe down with a clean room wipe and some isopropyl alcohol. So you can just take a clean room wipe and you can just press the top like this and you'll get some isopropyl on the wipe. The wipe is now saturated and you can go ahead and just wipe off any dust, any debris on the object. Generally speaking, the easiest way is we've got a shop vacuum that has a HEPA filter and a dust bag inside of it and then just vacuum off the dust from your object. I'm not trying to vacuum on because it's extremely loud. But yeah, that's kind of the two different ways of cleaning things in the clean room. There are two rooms in the clean room lab area. The first room is the room that you enter and this is our ground control and long-term testing room. It contains flat sat and proto sat that are connected and they're designed to be running long-term tests. This is the first room because it's easy to access. This is the first workstation. This is the flat sat desk. So we have a computer and two monitors to monitor flat sat and to control flat sat if you're not using it remotely. We have a power supply that powers flat sat and then we have the actual box that flat sat is stored in. This box is just to protect uh, flat sat from any like screwdrivers falling on if you're working over it. Um, it's also to protect it and just let people know that, hey, don't touch the stuff inside the box. There's lots of wires, lots of cables. All it takes someone to bump it and have a wire pop out. And then we've got 30 minutes or an hour of troubleshooting why flat side isn't working anymore. So if it's in a box, don't touch it. It's a good rule. This is the second workstation. We've got a box that contains protosat in it. We've got a power supply for protosat and we've got a computer that can control and talk to protosat. It's the same as flat sat. Just the main difference is, is that it's the prototype satellite and not flat sat. There is a small first aid kit. Uh, to open it, just remove it and open it flat because everything's just sitting in here. Okay, now let's go into the other room, the assembly and testing lab. This is the assembly and testing portion of the lab. This is our electronics assembly workspace. So it includes a hot air rework station. It includes a uh, 3D microscope for doing inspection and rework of electronics. It has a fume extractor because if you're doing any soldering in the clean room, it produces a lot of smoke and particulates and fumes and that's absolutely not clean. So it's extremely important to be using the fume extractor and it's operated by this button on the desk. You just press it and a couple seconds, fume extractor turns on and you can extract the fumes. We also have a soldering iron with tips. Soldering iron turns on at the top. This is a 
uh, I believe it's called a direct drive soldering iron. The tip is what determines the temperature. There is no temperature adjustment the soldering iron. If you want different temperatures, you have to change your tip. The tip will have a number on it, starting with CVC dash something. Uh, if it's seven, it stands for 700 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's six, it stands for 600 degrees Fahrenheit. And if it's a five, it stands for 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Most of our soldering, we just use the 600 degree Fahrenheit tips. It gets heat into the joint very quickly, very easily. We've got a couple different types of tips, chisel tips and point tips, and you can swap the tips out by grabbing one of these pads and just pulling the tip out and then shoving the tip back in. Uh, make sure you use these silicone pads because the tips can be hot and you can change the tip while the iron's on and everything. We've got two different types of solder. Because we're assembling electronics for space flight, everything we do is leaded. Uh, we can't risk tin whisker growth and we don't really have the ability of applying low off gassing conformal coatings here in this lab. So we just solder everything with leaded solder. We also have a ultrasonic cleaning machine or ultrasonic cleaner. This is mostly used for cleaning screws and fasteners. So washers, nuts, bolts, screws, etc. cetera. Uh, right now it has a metal cleaning solution in it, which is found below the desk. Read the instructions. You can't just pour it in. You have to mix it with distilled water. Uh, use the degas function on the ultrasonic cleaner to get the air bubbles out. We have these little T uh, steep steamers here that you can load with screws and then submerge it in the ultrasonic cleaner. You can just turn it on and you'll see that there's a temperature in Fahrenheit and Celsius right here. We've got cans of compressed air. This is very useful for cleaning off sensitive electronics that have a little bit of dust or dirt on them. We also have a small reflow oven here. Um, this is how we do most of our assembly is we use a stencil to put solder paste on circuit boards, place the components, and then we reflow them in this oven. The oven turns on by just this power button here, and you can use the arrows on the top to navigate what profile you want. Uh, e and I G dash no clean. It's the very first profile, kind of tweaked, and we've ran lots of tests in the ovens, and this is the best profile for doing PC 104 size circuit boards with a leaded solder on it. Up here, we've got all sorts of bins for storing of assembly related components. Generally, the way this works is this is like electronic components when we're doing um, electronics assembly. And then as we move out of electronics assembly and into satellite assembly, these move to being like subsystems and cable assemblies and connectors and more kind of things. Storage for whatever items we need quick and easy access to while we're sitting in at the workstation. So the first shelf is a cleaning bin. It's got stuff like Q-tips, uh, cotton and foam swabs, brushes, and isopropyl alcohol. We've got a PCB assembly bin, flux, solder, solder wick, solder paste, a bin for consumables, mixing containers, or these are really good for holding screws as well, syringes for applying epoxy, stir sticks for mixing epoxy, that kind of thing. We've got a glass container that you can fill with IPA for an IPA bath. It's incredibly important not to store the IPA in here. This is not a vapor seal container. We don't want IPA fumes floating around this lab with ESD discharge risk. And then we've also got clean room wipes up here. There's an overhead light that keeps everything nice and bright. And on the desk, we've got an ESD mat, points hanging down that you can strap in. And it's important to strap in before you do any work on the lab. This is the underside of the electronics assembly desk. Uh, we've got more bins for component storage. So this is labeled uh, CDH flake components. Um, and then in here we just have like connectors and resistors and capacitors and just bags of stuff that you need for electronics assembly. We've got like a bin for EPS stuff. That's the fume extractor down there. A bin for uh, bubble bags, garbage can, bin for clean bags. Uh, so we've got all sorts of ESD shielded bags in here that are all clean. This container here is a giant container of desiccant. If you've got moisture sensitive stuff, you can open this up and take a few packages of desiccant out and that'll dry the inside of the bags out. We don't have a wireless mic. This is the electronics testing workstation. Similar layout to the electronics assembly workstation with shelving, desk space and then shelving under the desk space. The shelving is organized with the same bins 
pick a bin, label it. As, as long as the bin is labeled and it's clear what's in the bin, that's really all that matters. So we don't try and be too specific, but we just try and keep it the general like team mech payload, EPS, etc. We've got more uh, ESD matting. We've got more grounding points so you can strap in. Stencil printer, this is more used with electronics assembly than it is testing, but it's stored under the desk of the electronics testing station. It allows you to mount a frameless stainless steel stencil, and then you can mount a PCB on this table here, and then you can use these adjustments here to align the stencil to the PCB. You can drop the stencil down on top of the PCB. It makes alignment way easier, as well as you can also then just lift this up, pull the board out, put another board in, put this down and, and repaste your board. A lot more consistent and reliable than taping a stencil down onto a desk. Yeah, and then we've got some just general piece of test equipment, power supplies and loads, oscilloscope, uh, we've got some meters and a uh, resistance meter, and we've got a slew of other test equipment, uh, spectrum analyzers, RF signal generators, more scopes, et cetera, that are outside the lab. We've also got a collection of test leads stored here, as well as nitro gloves, and we've got more test leads stored on the other wall as well. This is our clean workstation in a clean room, but this is the cleanest workstation we have. It's a laminar flow station, so it's essentially just a fan filter unit mounted above a workspace, and because it's right here above the workspace, it's much easier to keep this workspace clean than it is to keep the whole room clean. So it's it's a cleaner space inside a clean room. You can turn it on by a power bar mounted under the desk. And it makes a bunch of noise and it has a light under it. But it's a similar thing. We have just a workbench with a grounded ESD mat, ESD grounding points for your straps. And this is where we do things like payload assembly or working with photodiodes or sensitive things that are difficult to clean or can't clean at all. But if you don't have access to a clean room, this can be an extremely good and affordable cheap option for doing spacecraft assembly. Don't worry about getting a whole clean room. Just worry about getting two or three of these to have clean workspaces, one for doing assembly and one for like long-term testing and then one for just general purpose use uh, is probably the way to go. Uh, much cheaper than building a whole clean room. Under this desk, we've got all sorts of uh, storage and transportation options. So we've got Pelican cases. This one's the one for the uh, satellites to get transported in. So we've got the foam cutouts. Okay, so the last interesting thing in our lab is our tool cabinet. The first drawer is all hand tools. So starting from left to right, we've got your ball head uh, hex drivers, we've got hex keys, we've got spudgers, we've got an assortment of tweezers. Um, these are all mostly Hakko tweezers, but we've got a few Nipix tweezers as well for different things. Uh, we've got both stainless steel and plastic tip tweezers for working with fragile like glass and stuff we don't want to scratch. Scalpels or X-Acto knives, a bunch of different types of pliers. These ones are just really nice, easy to use pliers. Cutters with the lead uh, retention on them. So when you cut like a lead off on a through hole part, it keeps the lead in the pliers and the lead doesn't go flying off. It's really important for a clean room. Flathead pliers, scissors, and we've got some dental tools and picks here, spatulas, more pliers, more cutters. Got some wire strippers, although you shouldn't really be stripping wires in a clean room because it generates uh, debris that are not good, but they're in here just for kind of like things that have to be kept clean. Screwdriver, the tips are stored in the head or in the base, I guess. Precision screwdriver kit. This is really kind of the heart and soul of everything we do in this lab. This is a VHA. We've also got a VHA torque driver kit. This contains three different torque driver handles, which can be adjusted with this tool here. You just slide it in and then you can adjust the torque, which is measured right there. Here's the instrument calibration for the torque kit in case anybody asks for it. Um, all of these tools were bought through mostly DigiKey, I believe, or VHA directly. Uh, this drawer, we've got like handheld test equipment. We've got a handheld LRC meter. In this case here, we have my favorite test equipment in the whole lab. This is a Joule scope. Uh, so it's an energy analyzer. You plug this into a power supply and then you plug your device into this and it records like how many milliamp hours of energy it consumes. Um, it also has watt hours and it does like really fast auto scaling. So you can see things like microcontrollers turning on from sleep mode. Yeah, it's extremely useful. We use this quite a bit for doing power consumption uh, validation of 
the spacecraft loads, uh, optical power meter, um, we've got Kelvin clips, and then we've got a few like more niche pieces of test equipment. These are uh, EV blogs, U currents that are useful. And then we've got a little mini uh, arbitrary waveform uh, generator for the oscilloscope as well. And the third drawer is just kind of general purpose lab stuff, two different scales. I believe the big scale is the more sensitive one. It's got 0.1 gram resolution. The small scale uh, has a higher weight load, but it's only one gram resolution. We've got a label printer, which is fantastic for organizing stuff. Label printing tape, solder sucker, calipers. Some of these are calibrated and they have the cal cards in them. These are the super long big calipers, humidity indicator cards. One other lens for the microscope. This is the 8X lens, the 4X is on there right now. Calibrated 300 gram mass for the scales. Under this scale, we've got some storage and organization. This is the container of bits and pieces for the solder paste stencil printer. And we've got these containers that have these nice little containers, which are very useful for putting uh, small SMD parts in when you're doing assembly, as well as things like screws and whatnot. And we've got two cases of these. They're very useful. Underneath the tool cabinet, we've got some miscellaneous lab supplies, isopropyl alcohol in the back here. Whoop, let's focus. We've got some air dusters, uh, some masks for working with some of the epoxies are kind of bad to breathe. More clean room wipes. We've got ESD mat cleaner. Uh, it's important if you're gonna clean the mats, which you should do regularly to use the uh, ESD mat cleaner because the isopropyl alcohol can strip the ESD conductivity from the mat. Uh, we've got some just general purpose like plastic containers, a few more clean bags and stuff down here. Any of the supplies, that are in here, there's more supplies that are stored outside. That was the overview of the lab. I showed you the long-term testing and control room that has protosat and flat sat in it, as well as I just showed you the uh, assembly and testing room where we do the electronics assembly and the electronics testing. Everything that you see in this room is what we use to assemble and test Orcasat. If you've got any questions, feel free to reach out to us. There's a tool that you're looking for. If there's something that you're trying to figure out how to use, there's a good chance that we've already done it. Please ask questions. Uh, and if you've got questions on how to use the lab space or gain access to it, also please feel free to ask. Once again, it's a controlled workspace. There's sensitive spacecraft hardware like Protosat and FlightSat stored in here. Uh, we don't want anyone damaging that. But at the same time, we also want to let the people who need to use the space use it and benefit from it and benefit from all the things that we learned, setting the space up and organizing it and changing it around and um, making it as usable as possible. That was the overview of the lab. We're gonna head out and close this video out. So thank you for watching. Take your lab jacket off and make sure you close the top button. And then you can wear your hairnet and booties outside.